we will implode more patriotic news. Thank you. The latest reports reveal CNN is getting dumped. As the latest reports reveal, CNN is facing a risk of getting dropped by its mother organization following the att Time Warner merger. Apparently, this is why the narratives and reports of Trump have so drastically changed. They are not 90% negative anymore. You can open the pictures of this tweet and see for yourself. We would be happy to hear your thoughts and predict. Breaking state of California on its way to exit the United States. There is a big chance that the state of California will make a move similar to what Britain made with the European Union and that is exit the United States of America. This Tuesday. Xavier Becerra issued an official ballot measure title that will allow Californian citizens to gather 585.000 signatures in 2018 to actually exit the U.S., the Associated Press reported. The initiative, titled California Autonomy from Federal Government, would form a commission to recommend avenues for California to pursue its independence and delete part of the state constitution that says it is an inseparable part of the U.S. The measure would also instruct the governor and California congressional delegation to negotiate more autonomy for the state. From Western Journalism, this is the second attempt to get such an initiative on the 2018 ballot by a group that is known as Yes California or CalExit. The first effort was withdrawn in April after the group's founder, Louis Marinelli, emigrated to Russia, which prompted the group's official spokesman, Marcus Ruiz Evans, to pull the initiative. He promised to resurrect it later, which he now has. During an interview in January, Evans said Donald Trump's election has greatly fueled his group's cause, which dates back over two years. If California votes were taken away, Trump won the popular election said Evans. So what kind of people elect a man like that? The answer, not Californians. So we're basically here to tell people that I know that California officials are telling you that they're going to protect you, but in fact and federalism, the federal government, overrules state law, he added. There is going to be a limit to what they can do. Evans told reporters the Supreme Court has already recognized the right of states to secede in Texas v. White. 1869, though the justices actually held states do not have the right to secede unilaterally. Other states must accede to the move through the amendment process. He cited issues such as climate change and illegal immigration as reasons California would be better off as its own master. The group has 20,000 followers on Twitter and over 40,000 likes on Facebook. Evans believes California, as the fifth largest economy in the world, will be just fine on its own. At $2.6 trillion, the Golden State's economy dwarfs the GDPs of its sister states. Its closest rival is Texas with a GDP of approximately $1.6 trillion. California also has the largest population by far of any state with 39 million, or 12% of the United States, with Texas, once again, in second at 28 million, followed by Florida and New York, each with approximately 20 million. Cal exit organizers have 180 days to collect the required 585,000 signatures for the measure to appear on the ballot in 2018. What do you think of this? Share your opinion. Shocking report Tucker Carlson just exposed a massive fraud made by Obama. The Obama administration will be remembered as one of the worst administrations in our history. President Trump got his hands full with work in order to repair the damage done by Obama and his minions. The corruption scandals that have Obama's name all over them just keep piling up. We all know how the former president enjoyed and still enjoys to have the time of his life at the cost of U.S. taxpayers. Recently, Tucker Carlson from Fox News exposed the truth on what Obama has been spending much of our taxpayer dollars. He elaborated on what occurred in one program the Obama administration initiated. Tucker said, Investigators say that getting bogus applications approved is ludicrously easy, and as many as 36% of all beneficiaries from the program should have been rejected. Lifeline was the name of the project that was initially started in 1985 to aid the destitute families to be able to buy a family phone. 
However, with Obama, this program took a turn for the worse. The former president allowed people to take advantage of the program, enabling them to get several phones for free. Basically, this costs the U.S. taxpayers millions in fraudulent charges. What do you think of this? Share your opinion. Can't believe this happened. CNN admits Mueller's investigation of Trump is going too far. CNN's legal commentator Matthew Whitaker published an op-ed this Sunday. In it, the ex-U.S. attorney explains how the focus of the investigation of special counsel Robert Mueller is really expanded. This started as an investigation of conspired Russian meddling in the last presidential race of 2016. But now, it expanded to President Trump's finances. Even though CNN informs that the opinion of this editorial does not ultimately equal the one of the network, if none of the people in CNN agreed with this, it would definitely not be published. CNN reported, the president is absolutely correct. Mueller has come up to a red line in the Russia 2016 election meddling investigation that he is dangerously close to crossing. According to a CNN article, Mueller's investigators could be looking into financial records relating to the Trump organization that are unrelated to the 2016 election. According to these reports, sources described an investigation that has widened to focus on possible financial crimes, someone connected to the 2016 election. The piece goes on to cite law enforcement sources who say non-Russia-related leads that involve Trump associates are being referred to the special counsel to encourage subjects of the investigation to cooperate. This information is deeply concerning to me. It does not take a lawyer or even a former federal prosecutor like myself to conclude that investigating Donald Trump's finances or his family's finances falls completely outside of the realm of his 2016 campaign and allegations that the campaign coordinated with the Russian government or anyone else. That goes beyond the scope of the appointment of the special counsel. In fact, Deputy Attorney General Rod Rosenstein's letter appointing special counsel Robert Mueller does not give Mueller broad far-reaching powers in this investigation. He is only authorized to investigate matters that involved any potential links to and coordination between two entities, the Trump campaign and the Russian government. People are wrongly pointing to, and taking out of context, the phrase any matters that arose or may arise directly from the investigation to characterize special counsel's authority as broad. The word investigation is clearly defined directly preceding it in the same sentence specifically as coordination between individuals associated with the campaign of Donald Trump and Russia. The Trump Organization's business dealings are plainly not within the scope of the investigation, nor should they be. Whitaker even calls on Rosenstein to consider reigning in Mueller. CNN reports. The word investigation is clearly defined directly preceding it in the same sentence specifically as coordination between individuals associated with the campaign of Donald Trump and Russia. The Trump Organization's business dealings are plainly not within the scope of the investigation, nor should they be. If he were to continue to investigate the financial relationships without a broadened scope in his appointment then this would raise serious concerns that the special counsel's investigation was a mere witch hunt. If Mueller is indeed going down this path, Rosenstein should act to ensure the investigation is within its jurisdiction and within the authority of the original directive. Lately, the Washington Post had a stunning report, named the quest to prove collusion is crumbling. In this report, the network basically agreed on the fact that the whole Russian interference narrative is T-story that never was. Almost as stunning as the piece itself, the story was ignored by both the mainstream media and independent media. Almost as stunning as the piece itself, the story was ignored by both the mainstream media and independent media. Ed Rogers penned this piece following Jared Gushner's testimony. Rogers said, instead of igniting the Russian collusion narrative, Jared Kuzner's testimony stifled it, causing the media to quietly back out of the room unnoticed. Excerpts from Rogers' WAPO op-ed while everyone is fixated on President Trump's unbecoming and inexplicable assault on Attorney General Jeff Sessions, the media has been trying to sneak away from the Russian collusion story. That's right. For all the breathless hype, the on-air furrowed brows and the not-so-veiled hopes that this could be Watergate, 
Jared Kushner's statement and testimony before Congress have made Democrats and many in the media come to the realization that the collusion they were counting on just isn't there. As the date of the Kushner testimony approached, the media thought it was going to advance and refresh the story. But Kushner's clear, precise and convincing account of what really occurred during the campaign and after the election has left many of President Trump's loudest enemies trying to quietly back out of the room unnoticed. Cable news airtime and in-print word count dedicated to the non-existent collusion story appear to be dwindling. Democrats and their allies in the media seem less eager to talk about it, and when they do, they say something to the effect of but, but, but. Kushner didn't answer every question. He wasn't under oath. There are still more witnesses. What about this or that new gadfly? They are stammering. And it hasn't taken long for news producers and editors to realize that the story is fading. At last, the story that never was is not happening. Of course, there was no Russian collusion between the Trump campaign and the Russians during the 2016 election. The entire hoax was made up out of thin air and the fake news media has talked about it round the clock in order to keep the story alive. The Russian hoax always was and always will be a way for the Democrats to deflect from their many crimes. You can read the full op-ed here. We would be happy to hear your thoughts and predictions. Supreme Court ruled Barack Obama has break the Constitution. Barack Obama has always considered himself as one above the law. While being a president, he has violated the Constitution too many times and he is doing it now. This Tuesday, the Supreme Court ruled that Obama has violated the Constitution. This Tuesday, the Supreme Court ruled that Obama's appointee, Leif Solomon, has unconstitutionally been doing the position of general counsel for the National Labor Relations Board for some three years. Back in Deanna 20111, after the Senate decided to decline Solomon's appointment, Obama decided not to follow their order and left Solomon an acting general counsel. And he did it for three years. As Chief Justice John Roberts said, Obama has done an end run around the Constitution. Leif Solomon had broken the agency's ethics rules by violating and intervening in a case on behalf of a company that he owned stock in. Following the Federal Vacancies Reform Act of 1998, FVRA, he was supposed to step down. That is the reason the Senate declined his nomination to be a permanent general counsel. In a 6-2 vote, written authored by Chief Justice John Roberts, the Supreme Court decided that Barack Obama violated the Constitution. Only two months after leaving the office, Obama managed to have a community organizing organization with 250 offices around the USA, and 30,000 people employed. Their goal is to meddle and oppose the Trump administration constantly. His new leftist nonprofit organization is named OFA, which means Organizing for Action. The community organizer is going back to organizing albeit on a much larger scale, not to mention more violent and destructive. According to the Daily Mail, Obama's ex-advisor, Valerie Jarrett, moved into his house in order to closely cooperate with the Obamas. Jarrett was also involved in all of Obama's major domestic and foreign policy decisions. Barack Obama, who many claim, will be creating a shadow government to frustrate the policy goals of this administration. We're looking at something that's coming very close, it seems to me, like sedition. When you start working against the interests of the United States government, whether it's in the person of Donald Trump of whomever, and conspiring and organizing to frustrate the policies that he intends to execute, I think that really takes us to a whole other level. Lou Dobbs. We would be happy to hear your thoughts and predictions. Boom. Nikki Haley issued a chilling warning to North Korea. She's not playing. The liberal mainstream media uses every opportunity to attack President Donald Trump and his administration. But it seems like they can't gather the courage to say something bad about U.S. Ambassador to the U.N. Nikki Haley because does a hell of a job at the United Nations. Today, she took some time off her busy schedule to visit Fox News with a very serious threat to North Korea and Kim Jong-un. We are not playing anymore. 
the new sanctions against North Korea were organized by Haley herself and are unlike anything we have ever seen before. She managed to get China, Russia, and Iran all to agree to cease the buying of all goods from North Korea's three biggest industries, coal, iron, and seafood, amongst others. Haley told Fox News, a third of their trade exports have been hit, and we basically gave them a kick in the gut with a billion dollars of sanctions that they are going to begin to feel right away. Now, a billion dollars may not seem like a lot to an economy, but North Korea only exports three billion dollars annually. Losing one-third of their income will be devastating to them. Haley said the ball is now in Kim's court. It is his turn to decide if he will stop threatening the U.S. with nukes and ICBMs or keep going and see if he survives the year. They can either respond by pulling back and saying that they are not going to be a part of this reckless activity anymore or they can see where it goes. And we'll continue to keep up the strength, and keep up the activity and make sure that we stop them. Look, North Korea is a huge threat. Their nuclear capabilities are impressive, as are their missiles. Not only that, but they have potentially nuclear armed stealth submarines around the world that we may not be able to stop an attack from. A nuclear war would be horrible. However, understand this Kim Jong-un. If you continue to threaten us or if you attack us, we will turn your corpse and empire into a pile of ashes. Share if you are glad America is taking a stand. What do you think of this? Share your opinion.